try it. And because nothing matters, everything does. When you think of it from that perspective, the entire universe was built just for us. Tiny, tiny Earth. about how big the universe is, I feel small. I feel like nothing that happens here on Earth truly matters. I'm a speck of dust on the timeline of coincidence. When I think like that, things... I got a text from Maddie. How many of us really find people who understand the full depth of who we are? I mean, with fishing rods settled on their shoulders like carbines. He switched to the truck. Memories tried to crowd in on him. Memories of a more recent vintage. Hey. I'm glad you made it. Welcome to my room. I know it's raining so hard outside, but this is my favorite weather. When it's gloomy and rainy. I don't know, I just think it's underrated, you know? What? Oh, this. This is Black Obsidian. It's for protection, clarity, all kinds of things. I can tell you more about it later, next time. But first, you're in for a real treat. First, I fixed you a really, really good drink. Your favorite. Oh, well... It will be your favorite after you try it. Here, try it. That's good, isn't it? So, what do you want to do first? Well, I am baking some goodies in the oven, so... While that's baking, I figured that I could... Is it okay if I touch your face? I could do your skincare. 
we could do like a spa kind of, you know, thing, like a sleepover spa. And um, I could do your hair and back tracing, you know, I don't know, I think it would fit like the thunderstorm and just like the relaxation vibes. And I could tell you a little bit more about Maddie and, you know, yeah, okay. Let's remove your makeup first and then I can apply some oil and brush out your lashes and then put on a face mask to seal everything in. Yeah, okay. So all of your makeup is removed pretty much, right? Just a little bit left. Okay, hold still, okay? really easy for your skin to get really dull and dry. So, I know that thunder is crazy, but I love it. Okay, I'm gonna massage into your face, okay? My hands are clean, don't worry. Your skin is literally so lovely. set the mood, the relaxing mood, with the room spray. I have two room sprays. The first one is called Haunted Graveyard. Well, it smells mostly like moss and damp pavement. You know how the pavement smells after it rains? 
I know. Not everyone's favorite scent, but I'm weird. This one is a little bit more conventional, I guess. Maybe you'll like this one more. It's called Thunderstorm. It literally smells like the earth after a thunderstorm mixed with flowers. You gonna smell it? It smells like outside right now, actually. Let's go with this one. How do you like the scent? Good. Let me use this on your face. It'll help with your circulation. And it's really relaxing too. Relaxing? Okay, good. Tell me why Maddie texted me. Come here. I don't want my brother to hear because he will literally blackmail me and go and tell Maddie that you were over here and I was talking about her. Come here. She was literally texting me as if we're cool or something and I don't know, she was trying to tell me about the new girl, Jordan. He had the new girl at her school and she was like, why is Jordan? some lash oil that I can put on you and then brush out your lashes for you. Well, it's a lash serum, but... Okay, close your eyes. Then look closed. Right here on the other eye. Now to brush them out. Okay, so when I 
missing blank. Just a blank, okay. Blank. 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 them and I'll be right back, okay? I'm back. Homemade chocolate chip cookies. Yep, homemade chocolate chip cookies. They're really, really good. Well, I think they are, but you can be the judge. Do you want one? You can have as many as you want. I made a whole bunch, so I love chocolate chip cookies. Whenever I make them, I always make like a whole bunch of them, so they were good. Go easy on me. Are they good? I figured. I figured you'd ask me to scratch your back. Okay, we can do a tracing, okay? Um, you can guess what I'm tracing later, too. So. I know. Me and Maddie, we used to have sleepovers all the time. We only stopped having the sleepovers because she turned toxic. She's really weird and mean now, but back then, we were really close. Yeah. Maddie was my best friend. How did we become best friends? <laughs> well, I can't really remember what made us become best friends, but... Story time. Sleepover. Mm -hmm. And there happened to be a really mean girl there, and she tried to play a prank on me. Mean girl's name was Heather Holiday, and when everyone was asleep at the sleepover, she tried to put my hand in some warm water. You know how like, when you put your hand in warm water when you're asleep, it's supposed to like make you want to go use the restroom? Yeah. But that didn't happen because Maddie woke up 
and took my hand out of the cup of warm water. So I guess she kind of rescued me. Mm -hmm. And ever since she did that, we started talking and becoming really good friends. And then I found out that I had a lot in common with her. And she's just really funny and I love to laugh. What happened? Well, we were friends for many years and then she became toxic. I know, I am supposed to catch you up on all of that. I will. But tonight is mainly about your relaxation, okay? I know, and bonding time. I'm really glad you're here. I haven't had a sleepover in so long. Who would have thought that you would be at my house for a sleepover? I mean, I met you in the school bathroom when they were making fun of you for having those clips in your hair. Do you remember? Dude, you were literally so upset that day. I'm not making fun of you, but you really were, and, um, I don't know, kids are trash sometimes, you know? They made fun of you for the dumbest reason, because you had clips in your hair. I thought they were really cute. But, that's how it is sometimes. And now, we're friends and you're at my sleepover. I would have invited more people than just you, but after Maddie, it was hard to trust people again, you know? Yeah, after Maddie, it's just hard to trust people again, you know? Yeah, we did fall out, but it wasn't one event that made us fall out. It was like multiple events, you know? And honestly, I should have noticed the red flags, but I didn't. And it's just right here. When Maddie transferred to her school, I was sad because I was like, my best friend transferred to another school. But then I transferred to her school too. And when I transferred to her school, she was super nice. I mean, she introduced me to all her friends. And we all got along great. But it was weird because it seemed like whenever I got too close to her friends, she got a little weird. Mm -hmm. 
like she didn't want us to be too close. Close, but not closer than they are, you know? Which is fine, I mean, they're your friends, but... Her actions just got really weird. One day we were in class, right? Here, let me oil your hair and then um, I'm gonna pluck some stuff out of it, okay? Uh, no, nothing major, just like little things I see that I'm gonna pluck out for you, okay? But let me oil first and then I'll tell you what happened. And she was texting our friends, Stephanie and um, Jennifer. Well, she was mad because Stephanie couldn't make it dress shopping. And I was like, um, like dress shopping? Like you're going dress shopping like for winter formal? And she was like, oh, yeah, um, Raven, do you want to go dress shopping with us tonight? So basically, they were going dress shopping for winter formal without me. Uh -huh. I mean, I had already let her know that I was interested in going to formal. We discussed this. We were all going. We were all friends. Stephanie, Jennifer, me, all the girls, and Maddie, like, we were all going together. We talked about having dates that we were going with, but we were all going to formal together. You know what I mean? Like, as a group. Like, a really big group. was just like, why would you go dress shopping and not invite me? Like, wouldn't we just all go together or all go alone, like separate? I don't know. It was just kind of like a red flag, you know? I kind of felt left out. I'm not gonna lie. But when I told her about it, she was like, well, you didn't tell me that you wanted to go to formal. Like, I didn't know if you wanted to go. Plus, you're always so busy. I was like, busy. 
she knew I wasn't busy, and she knew that I wanted to go to formal, so it was just excuses, honestly. Yeah. That was like the first, like, red flag, I guess? Because friends don't leave friends out of things like that, you know what I mean? Plus, she only invited me because Stephanie couldn't go, you know? So it's like, who wants to be the backup plan, you know? But anyways... It's okay. I'm over it, honestly. And formal. Let's just relax and I'll tell you about that later, okay? Let me put some of this serum on your back. It's winter and our skin gets kind of dry, you know, and dull, so this will help your skin be really supple. Would you like some? Okay. Just massage that in. Are you hungry? Do you want more cookies? Nothing. Okay, it's um, it's just a little voice recorder 
I just recorded all of the short stories and poems that, um, that I liked. Mm -hmm. My voice. I mean, I guess if you want to, you can. It's really nothing special, though. When I think about how big the universe is, I feel small. I feel like nothing that happens here on Earth truly matters. I'm a speck of dust on the timeline of coincidence. When I think like that, things get very dark, very fast. But what if we are the ones who give our universe meaning because we matter to each other? We are breathing, living organisms with consciousness which is an absolutely horribly random thing to happen to us. And because nothing matters, everything does. When you think of it from that perspective, the entire universe was built just for us. Tiny, tiny Earth in this huge galaxy. And we happen to land here. So we are very big. We are the point of the universe. That one's by Grace Weather. I really liked her perspective on it, so I just put it in there. Yeah. I just put all of my favorite writings and poems, short stories, anything that I like in there, so. You want to hear more? I don't know about all that. Okay, fine, but only if you can guess what I'm going to trace on your Mac. Then you can hear more. I will write three words on your back, okay? First word.
hate that you're so good at guessing. Fine, you can listen to the next one. Wait, hold on. I got a text from Maddie. Yes. My brother might be listening outside the door, so come here. She texted me and said she was like, Here, the next recording that I have is me reading a Stephen King story, Salem's Lot. You've never heard it? How about this? I can brush your hair, I have some scalp sticks, I can trace on your back, brush your back. And you can listen to the recording and the sound of the rain and just fall asleep. How about that? Okay, you can press play. sure if I'll ever find the friends that truly understand me. I mean, really understand me. Maddie was my best friend, but I feel like she only knows certain parts of me. Like, she doesn't get the whole picture. How many of us really find people who understand the full depth of who we are? I mean, people who we understand us, the ins and outs, the shadows of us, the dark sides of us, and the light, and yet still love and accept us fully. April 1st, 2019. I'll be reading Stephen King's Salem's Lot. By the time he had passed Portland, going north on the turnpike, Ben Mears had begun to feel a numb, unpleasurable, tingling excitement in his belly. It was September 5th, 1975, and Summer was enjoying her final grand play. The trees were bursting with green. The sky was a high blue, and just over the Belmont town line, he saw two boys walking along parallel to the expressway with fishing rods settled on their shoulders like carbines. He switched to the travel lane, slowed to the minimum turnpike speed, and began to look for anything that would jog his memory. There was nothing at first, and he tried to caution himself against almost sure disappointment. You were nine then. That's 25 years of water under the bridge. Places change, like people. In those days, the four-lane 295 hadn't existed. If you wanted to go to Portland from the lawn, you went out Route 12 to Falmouth, and then got on number one. Time had rushed on. Stop that shit. But it was hard to stop. It was hard to stop when a big BSA cycle with Jack handlebars suddenly roared past him in the passing lane. A kid in a t-shirt driving, 
a girl in a red cloth jacket and a huge mirror lens sunglasses riding crewing behind them. They cut in a little too quickly and he overreacted, jamming on his brakes and laying both hands on the horn. The BSA sped up, belching blue smoke from his exhaust. And the girl jumped a little thing with that gun. He resumed speed, wishing for a cigarette. His hands were trembling slightly. The BSA was almost out of sight now, moving fast. The kids, the goddamn kids. Memories tried to crowd in on him. Memories of a more recent vintage. He pushed them away. He hadn't been on a motorcycle in two years. He planned never to ride on one again. A flash of red caught his eye off to the left, and when he glanced that way, he felt a burst of pleasure and recognition. A large red barn stood on a hill far across the rising, the rising field of Timothy and Clover. A barn with a cupola painted white. Even at this distance, he could see the sun gleam on the weather vane atop that cupola. It had been there then, and was still there now. It looked exactly the same. Maybe it was going to be all right after all. Then the trees blotted it out. As the turnpike entered Cumberland, more and more things began to seem familiar. He passed over the Royal River, where they fished for Steelies and Picarella's boys. Passed a brief, flickering view of Cumberland Village through the trees. In the distance, the Cumberland Water Tower with its huge slope painted across the side. Keep name green. Aunt Cindy had always said someone should print, bring money underneath that. His original sense of excitement grew and he began to speed up, watching from the side. It came twinkling up out of the distance, in reflectorized green five miles later. Route 12, Jerusalem's lot. Cumberland, Cumberland. A sudden blackness came over him, dousing his good spirits like sand on fire. He had been subject to these since. His mind tried to speak Miranda's name and would not let it out. The bad time he was used to fending them off, but this one swept over him with a savage power that was dismaying. What was he doing, coming back to a town where he'd lived for four years as a boy, trying to recapture something that was lost? What magic could he expect to recapture by walking roads that he had once walked as a boy, and were probably asphalted and straightened and locked off and littered with tourist beer cans? The magic was gone, both white and black. It had all gone down the chutes on that night when the motorcycle had gone out of control and there was the yellow moon van growing and growing. His wife Miranda screamed, cut off with sudden finality when the exit came up on his right and for a moment he considered driving right past it, continuing on to Chamberlain or Lewiston, stopping for lunch, and then turning around and going back. But, back where? Home? That was a lie. If there was a home, it had been here. Even if it had only been four years, it was his. He signaled and went up the ramp. Toward the top, where the turnpike ramp joined Route 12, which became Jointer Avenue closer to town. He glanced up toward the horizon. What he saw there made him jam the brakes on both feet. The trees, mostly pine and spruce, rose in gentle slopes toward the east, seeming to almost crowd against the sky at the little village. From here the town was not visible. Only the trees and in the distance, 
where those trees rose against the sky. The peaked, gabled roof of the Marston house. He gazed at it, fascinated. Warring emotions crossed his face with kaleidoscopic swiftness. Still here, he moved.